Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to welcome you tonight to our VR theater in Yokohama. Uh, in a moment, we will show you uh, a demo reel of our holographic technologies. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I started off uh, as a sound guy at a video game company in Osaka. I was making beeps and bleeps. Uh, and after that, I went on to the animation production side and then on to live action films uh, in Hollywood. So, before I get started, can I ask, is there any gamers out there tonight, or today, if I should say, hardcore gamers? Just, I want to make sure, because I uh, have to be careful what I say. So, uh, for working in the video game industry for 10 years, it was very interesting times, because uh, at that moment, uh, the Japanese game companies went out to the global market and really became a major force in the world of entertainment. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why the Japanese video game companies were able to excel compared to other forms of entertainment, like anime or manga or music, is because video game companies evolved in hand with the latest technologies at the time. And I think around uh, 2000, the Japanese video game companies uh, slowly started to decline, and we wanted to think why this happened. So speaking of the video game industry, uh, I think every other year, back in from the 80s, there was a new hardware, new systems that came out with uh, groundbreaking visuals. And as kids, we were really excited back then to see everything, see these new graphics, new games come out. I still remember the day that the new uh, Dragon Quest uh, games came out in Japan. I was a little boy. At midnight, I would sneak downstairs, sneak down into my mom's purse, try to steal money to buy that game on launch day. The problem is, she always catch me every time. It's no wonder, on the night before launch, Dragon Quest is on every single news, on the papers, magazines, and even the commentators warned parents. Parents, beware, your, your kids be picking your pockets. So, uh, back then it was very, very crazy, like the uh, recent Pokemon Go phenomenon. It's nothing compared to what it was back in the days in Japan. Nowadays, I think gamers are more sophisticated, more mature. Recently, I overheard, overheard a group of kids speaking about story structure or character arc, that high-resolution graphics doesn't really add to the overall game experience. These kids be talking like pros. When I was a kid with my buddies, we'd be busy trying to hit that A button 16 times a second. You can't even count that fast. Indeed, life and video games was much simpler uh, back then. So the question is, referring to these little kids, have we gone, have we reached the limit in visual graphics for the entertainment world, for video games, for films? Should we not inverse, invest any further in this area? Coming from a console gaming world, where every year or every other year a new system comes out, the production budgets grew exponentially. There were new problems, new labor, new issues to be solved, and the production budgets kept on increasing, and so did the sales. But somewhere around mid-2000, there was a new kid on the block, the mobile games. So these games, these were developed under a half a million dollars, maybe around 300,000 back then, and these little games could generate as much revenue as a full-fledged console game that would cost at least 10 times more to develop. So I was shocked. And for a company, which is business, the video game companies, they immediately shift towards uh, mobile games and shot down a lot of console games. And it only makes sense from an ROI perspective, return on investment. These mobile games were awesome. And I think the trend still continues today, though the mobile games has uh, become more expensive to build, and the competition has become more fierce, but it's still nothing compared to a AAA console game that could cost up to $100 million. And I've heard that uh, young and bright programmers and creators 
also want to make mobile games now because the salary is better. Well, I can't argue that. And let's put uh, video games to the side for a moment. Let's talk about TV screens. The 2K screens, if you have, uh, have her, uh, heard, the 4K screens. And right now, 8K screens uh, are under development. These are high-definition screens. So when I got my first high-definition screen and turned on the TV, I saw the uh, weather report. It didn't really have an impact on myself, whether it was high-definition or not. But the uh, new movies look great. So, and what about the uh, VR headsets uh, right now? I think it's a big trend. Is it going to last? I think we remember uh, a few years back, around 2012, during the London Olympics, all the manufacturers were trying to push this new 3D stereoscopic uh, TV sets with those glasses. I don't think we see these anymore. I think it was a failure. So there are certain risks involved in investing in new technologies and new hardware. And there is a lot of debate still continuing about fans, among professionals, about the cost effectiveness of investing in new technology and hardware. But I am a believer that new technology and visual graphics will push the limits and the experience of entertainment, and if we should turn our backs on investing in these new technologies, the industry itself will slowly decline. And I think that the current Japanese industry, the entertainment industry as a whole, is stuck in this downward spiral. That is why I decided to join DMM Futureworks, who built this VR theater, which you are now sitting. It's the first of its kind. I think it was a bold, uh, noble challenge. So let me uh, introduce you to our technology. So the technology behind this is an old technology, uh, dating 200 years back. It was called the Pepper's Ghost. It was set up to show an illusion on stage uh, back then for theater. We modernized the concept by using a super, wide, a super wide and super bright LED screen, which you can't see. It's on the floor right here. So the image is projected upwards to a transparent mylar screen, which is slightly slanted, and that's how you see the holographic images as you see on stage right now. Also, a major part of the experience, uh, the holographic experience, is the sound, uh, because how we perceive the world, is, uh, the major part of it is through uh, sound. That's why we have a 9.1 discrete channel system installed in our theaters. I think it would be easier to see the reel, to understand, so I will get the reel uh, ready. Uh, as we set up the reel, I have one last uh, message I would like to say to my fellow producers or future producers out there in the world, if a new and innovative project will cost $100 million, let it cost $100 million. If your CFO says no, don't back off. Because this business and industry will build upon these people who dare to take these risks and move the world forward. So back to our first question. Have we reached the limit to visual graphics, to new technologies? Please watch the reel, and you can be the judge. On behalf of DMM Futureworks, we thank you, the audience, and all the good people at TED uh, for your kind attention. Thank you very much.
I'm a 